Hi, welcome back. I'm Sherry with Ratchet Up Your Art, where we take the ordinary to the extraordinary and provide a different perspective along the way. And in today's video, we are going to demystify the brayer, how to use it, how to clean it. What are all the other different questions that the communities have been asking about with brayers? So keep watching while we ratchet up your art. A question I often see in the communities is, what is a brayer? Well, a brayer is really just like a, paint, a miniature paint roller. It is often used for printmaking, gluing, inking, and I often personally use it for adding pressure to the back of my prints when I'm jelly printing. Brayers come in many different sizes and shapes. This here is a one inch speed ball brayer. And these are the most popular brayers. They're the most economical brayers. The brayer you want to get is one that kind of squishes. As you can see, I can push this down. It's a, called a soft rubber brayer. Okay. And the brayer cannot be taken out of its housing. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. This is another speedball brayer, and this is what you would call a hard rubber plastic brayer. You cannot squeeze this. This is hard plastic. This can be pulled out of its housing by pulling these two pieces apart, the brayer part from this part here, but it's very difficult. As you can see, I'm having a hard time pulling this apart. So I'm not going to do that. The reason why you'd want to take them out of your housing is because you can clean it easier. But we'll talk about cleaning in just a moment. There's different sizes. This is your typical four inch brayer. This would be your inch and a half brayer. This is your two and a half inch brayer. Okay, so it's only an inch small, it's only an inch bigger than this one. And the thing about these types of brayers as you can all, as you can see, except for this one, they're all on their on the brayer part. Now, I have to tell you, if you are jelly printing, you can leave it like this for a short period of time. They're not going to misshapen by being on this part. But generally, the rule of thumb is you always lay the brayer on its backside, like that. So all these brayers should be turned over. That's a proper way of storing the brayers unless you're hanging them. I store my brayers in a little cup. I store my brayers right here in this little cup and I just put them in here. Because the, I can't hang them. So that's how I store my brayers. And it works just fine. Could you use um, this brayer, this hard rubber plastic brayer on your jelly prints? Yes, you can. It's not that big of a deal. And as you can see, I've done that before because I got them, once paint's on it, it's hard to tell between this brayer and this brayer. But you can. Um, I, just, I just don't use it hardly anymore since I have all these other brayers. Now there's been a couple questions about how you clean your brayers. Well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna roll off any of the paint as you're jelly printing. I've seen several people, they have big giant books that they get from Goodwill or that they may have in their house that they don't like anymore, don't use. Some are dictionaries, those big giant thick dictionaries to use when they roll off the excess paint off their brayer. So what I've decided to do is I'm using my child's old school papers. What are you going to do with them? You're just going to toss them, right? Why not use them for jelly printing? I mean, it's just notebook paper. It, it would work just as much as if you use copy paper. It's about the same thickness, if you will. When I create my jelly prints, I use my child's notebook papers 
to roll off the excess paint off my brayer. Eventually paint will clog up on your brayer. So like for example, you see how I have paint right here that's a little clogged up, right? So it's just, it leaves a little bit of an edge. I don't really consider this needing to be cleaned yet. Okay, everything is turning. So I don't see the need to clean. I just roll off my excess paint and I, I drive on. Now this brayer, this is, you can see I've used this brayer a lot. You can see that paint right here is starting to, to drip down right there. You can also see that paint is built up right here. And so I can't turn this brayer. See, I'm trying to turn it. I can't turn it. And it's probably time for a cleaning. Now, as I said, these brayers can be removed. And so I was able to remove that one. Now I can go in and I can clean all these bits and pieces off. The way most people clean off the excess paint is by the use of the Murphy oil soap. And so if you have brayers that you can remove, like this one, then you can put this into a, a bowl and with some Murphy oil soap, and let it soak. The other part I like to do is, is peel off the paint. Um, that's just one of the things I like to do. If you like to pick at your brayer like I do when it gets too crusty, do not take a knife to this. You can easily cut your brayer and you don't want that. I just try to find a piece that I can pull and keep pulling or I will pick at it. I don't have a deep nail, so it's not going to damage it. I try to do it that way. And get these skins off of my brayer. But if I get to be too impatient, and I think it needs to be cleaned, then I'm going to dump it into Murphy's oil soap. Now, there's a great video that shows you how to clean your brayers using the Murphy oil soap and I will post that up here on the screen so that you can go and um, check out the video. If you have a jelly plate that where your brayer is adding lines you got one or two things going on. One or maybe more. First of all your brayer is not rolling correctly. It'll roll correctly on paper but it's not rolling correctly on my my gel plate. I may have too much paint on my gel plate. Number one for the brayer. Okay. Number two, it will create lines if you're pressing too hard. So I was really trying to roll this to get the lines out. I mean, to get paint on my brayer. And when I'm doing, when I'm rolling really hard, it is causing gel plate to have lines. The other thing you need to do is use a bigger brayer. A bigger brayer will help with that and not in a lighter touch. So again, the reason why I use a different another gel plate is so that I can apply paint from the gel plate to my other gel plate without having those lines. And you can also control the amount of paint that's on your plate. If I were to go in, add some paint on here, on, strictly onto the plate, you're not gonna get an even roll. You're gonna get a blotchy print, right? So you gotta really work at that. And then you're gonna get lines because you're working that. So what you wanna do is you wanna put your paint on another plate or substrate, roll it out, then apply it. You can control the paint and you can control those lines. And see, this is where I was showing you that you had to rub really hard. See if you can see those lines. You see that line right there? You're having to rub really hard to work out the paint. If you work out the paint here, it will go a lot smoother. You can put several different colors down. And then you can have two brayers. So I can roll out my paint here and I'll roll it here. And I'll just pick and choose areas that I want my paint to be in, okay? Then I can come in with another brayer 
load my my brayer so you want to get paint all the way around that brayer and then you can add some additional paint then you could take another brayer if you really wanted to and just kind of blend it now remember every time you're rolling onto your brayer you're pulling off the paint so a lot just came up so if you wanted to add more load your brayer that means putting paint all the way around the brayer select the areas and you want a lighter touch so you don't have those lines now you may have blending lines but you won't have brayer edge of the brayer lines this is also a way you can mix colors on your plate so i'm kind of making like a little bit of an ombre effect grab another brayer now all these brayers are really in the same color family it doesn't really matter at this point now the lines you're getting is because of the paint so i'm just kind of mixing it just a little bit some over here these are just like how i'm using it as paint brushes let's say you don't like that painterly effect right well if you got another brayer and you were rolling it to smooth everything out it's going to brayer off okay let me go ahead and clean this brayer and then i'm going to go into this blue and see how my paints aren't mixing because i did that load it and then let's say I want a little bit of blue over here, a little bit of blue over here. So I'm just kind of blending my paints like a paintbrush. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull this print and see what we get. Again, there's nothing wrong with cleaning your brayer on the back of your paper. Some people like that. Some people don't. Um, it's really your preference. Now I did get a couple of lines because I rubbed too hard. I didn't have a light touch right there. You got to have a light touch. So there's a couple of places where I rubbed just a little bit too hard. So it's, it's a technique in which you have to practice at. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was all about brayers and I'll be glad to help you out if you have any additional questions about brayers. Go ahead and put them in the comments below. Click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and keep watching while we ratchet up your art.